Mr. Adams is absent tonight. Mr. Perk. Here. Mr. Melvin. Here. Mr. Rodri. Here. Mr. Araby. Here. Chairman Oten. Here. Mrs. Chesson. Here. Mrs. Mr. Lorraine. Here. President Chesson. I'm here, man. Thank you very much, Ms. Carlene. If everyone would please rise, we'll be letting the invocation by Councilman Roderick, followed by Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Araby. Dear Lord, we thank you for those with us that you would guide our thoughts and actions to bring your glory. Strengthen us and fill us with your peace. May, you, may we love and serve each other as Jesus has shown us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to do good work on earth. Amen. 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 Like the leaders of the flag, the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's deliberations. We would kindly ask you to please put your phone on silent and or turn it off out of consideration for others. I'd also like to remind anyone uh, from the public wishing to address the council to fill out a blue form to ensure that we recognize you during our public wishing to address the council uh, period. Additionally, during each of the ordinances, we will ask for public input whereby you can come up and state any concerns you have on an ordinance. Um, and I will remind you that when we get to resolutions, that will only be discussion by the council before it's moved to a vote. With that said, we'll jump right into the agenda. We do have all these, right? Yes, sir. Everything's up to date. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Item A, approval of minutes. I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the May 28, 2024 regular session, which will defer from June 11, 2024, June 25, 2024, and July 9, 2024 LPC meetings. So moved by Councilman Perk, second by Councilman Roger. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passed with eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. Item two, motion to accept the minutes of the June 11, 2024 regular session defer from the June 25, 24 and 7, June 25, 2024 and 7, 9, 2024 LPC meetings. So moved by Councilman Perk, second by Councilman Roderick. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes with eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. Item three, motion to accept the minutes of the June 25th, 2024 regular session, defer from the 7-9-24 LPC meeting. So moved by Councilman Perk, second by Councilman Roderick. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes, eight yeas, zero nays, one absence, that absence being Councilman Adams. Item four, motion to accept the minutes of the July 9th, 2024 regular session. So moved by Councilman Perk, second by Councilman Araby. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passed, eight yeas, zero nays, one absence, that absence being Councilman Adams. I want to thank the council clerk staff for getting uh, all the minutes caught back up while they were shorthanded. Brings us to item B, state and or legislative updates. I don't see any in the audience. Brings us to item C, LaFouche Parish Outstanding Citizen. And tonight, item D, proclamation. Number five, Parish President Archie Chesson to present a proclamation proclaiming August 15, 2024 as Acadian Heritage Day. Mr. President, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Whereas Louisiana's Cajun Bayou, Lafouche Parish is unapologetically Cajun destination and is comprised of many different ethnicities that make a unique cultural gumbo not found anywhere else in the world. And whereas Lafouche Parish is connected to the Acadian regions of Nova Scotia and Atlantic Canada throughout Acadian ancestral and historical ties and acknowledges the significant contributions made by the Acadians to our parish and our region. And whereas in 1881 at the National Acadian Convention in Merrimack, New Brunswick, the decision to adopt a national day was made, and in 2003, the National Acadian Day Act was passed by the Government of Canada. And whereas August 15th each year, the National Acadian Day has been observed in Canada to recognize the distinct nationality, history, and cultural significance of the Acadians. And whereas the state of Louisiana has, has observed Acadian Day the Friday after Thanksgiving to commemorate the Acadian people and to recognize that much of the early economic and political development of Louisiana is directly attributed to the industry of the Acadian people through cultivation of land, the utilization of the natural resources, and the interest of the Acadian people in political self-determination and American democracy. And whereas in 2022, the Lafouche Parish Tourism Commission, Louisiana's Cajun Bayou, formed a working partnership with the Acadian regions of Nova Scotia and the Congre Moldale Acadian 
titled From Acadian to Cajun, Two Countries, One Culture, and is continuing that partnership in 2024 by attending, by attending the Congre El Mondial Acadian with the purpose of promoting tourism and increasing the awareness of our shared cultural connections, including food, music, history, and ancestry. And whereas we understand that the ongoing need to preserve, promote, and celebrate our own Acadian and Cajun heritage, Lafouche Parish, and to educate the public about our diverse and distinct culture, now therefore I, Archie Chasson Parish, President Lafouche, do hereby proclaim August 15th, 2024 as National Acadian Heritage Day. Council. Uh, Ian Wall, 624 Percy Brown Road, Thibodeau, Louisiana. On behalf of Louisiana's Cajun Bayou, our President and CEO, Cody Gray, who could not be with us tonight. Myself and our Board of Directors, we just want to thank you again for recognizing Acadian Heritage Day in Lafouche Parish. Um, as Archie mentioned, we launched the From Acadian to Cajun Partnership with the Tourism Offices of Nova Scotia about two years ago. And again, we are looking forward to heading up to Nova Scotia again this year to celebrate the Congre Mondial Acadien, which is the world's largest gathering of the Acadian people. It only happens once every five years. Uh, we're going to be up there promoting Louisiana's Cajun Bayou, promoting our Cajun culture and our Acadian ancestry. So again, on behalf of Louisiana's Cajun Bayou, thank you very much for recognizing August 15th as Acadian Heritage Day. Thank you. Any Marie? questions? Good? Good. Thank you. Right, thank you. Much appreciated. Brings us out of me, presentations and or updates. We have none. Item F, legal advisor report. Uh, the was un unable to attend tonight, but they did reach out and say that they were available by uh, phone if need be. Uh, I will advise y'all that we're gonna just pull this one, this item from the agenda for future. I think I've been here for nine years and there's never been anyone there. So, and obviously they can speak at any point. Uh, so we'll remove that from future agendas. Which brings us to item G, engineers and or architect reports. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the Council. Stevie Smith with All South Consulting Engineers, uh, 107 West Woodlawn Ranch Road in Homa. So I'm going to give you an update tonight on a few of our projects going on for the Lafouche Parish government. Let's see, there you go. The first one on my list is the Matthews Trailhead Project. So this is a project that's going to consist of improvements basically in front of this building. The parish applied for a grant uh, several years ago. Uh, to make uh, what's referred to as trailhead improvements uh, up and down by Lafouche. Uh, the intention was is that in front of the Matthews government complex there would be a place for folks who are moving up and down the bayou uh, to stop at several uh, locations, kind of like the launch at Highway 90 and other places up further up the road. So this is one of several that were planned up and down the bayou. Again, th this project is going to include basically improvements in front of the building. We're going to uh, realign the parking lot. There's some drainage swales that will be installed. That's what you kind of see on this drawing in those gray areas. And there'll be a small plaza area, which is that rectangle that's kind of to the right of the drawing that's up on the uh, screen. This is funded by uh, a program at the state, DOTD program called Transportation Alternatives Program, TAP program. And again, it's meant to encourage folks to kind of move around uh, using different methods of uh, transportation. Uh, this project was bid on July 11th. The state actually handles the bidding for these projects, so they accepted the bids 
the low bid was submitted by Byron Tal, but it's $404,000, as you can see on the screen. It's going to be about 240 calendar days of construction when it is awarded. The, pat the state actually awards this project. It isn't brought to this council for award. The state actually awards it because that's the way they run that particular <coughs> grant program. Uh, the next one on my list is the Alador pump station. So this is phase two of a project to uh, improve drainage at Alador. Uh, phase one was a couple years ago. Uh, the parish installed new drainage culverts through the railroad at the back of Alador. Uh, those pipes are in place. So now we're going to go out there and build a new pump station. The pump station is going to include two new 30-inch pumps. They're going to tie into the discharge pipes that were installed a few years ago. New engines, new diesel tank, frankly a whole new pump station. I don't know if any of the council have been to the back of Alador to see the old pump station, but it's, it's old. Okay, like a lot of the pump station has been around for a while, it needs to be replaced. So this is a full replacement of that pump station. We took bids on this project in late June, on June 27th. Uh, the low bid was $4.18 million by Norris and Boudreaux. Uh, so I believe that one is actually on the agenda tonight for award. So that's later on the agenda. Uh, and we've recommended award. We received three bids. The other two were, were a little bit higher than this one. So we're glad that we have a project that's awardable uh, to bring to you. And this is funded by Statewide Flood Control Program. Statewide Flood Control is putting up about $3 million of this construction cost, and the parish government's putting up roughly 1.2 of the construction cost for this phase. Uh, the next one on my list is improvements over in Dissolvens. We call it Dissolvens Drainage Project. So the project includes drainage improvements from old. Uh, Highway 90, 182 now, all the way underneath the four lane and then down towards the pump station at the southern end of the uh, community. Uh, what I've got depicted here is what we refer to as phase one, which is some drainage improvements from the four lane highway going south towards the pump station. We developed a set of preliminary plans to improve the drainage in that area and then the parish asked us to go talk to the landowners, particularly the landowner we were going to have to impact for one of the drain lines. Uh, that landowner at the time was not supportive of the alternative that we had developed and so now we're working with the uh, Department of Public Works to try and come up with some other alternatives that maybe don't uh, impact the same landowner in the same way. Uh, so until we get the landowner issues resolved, we're not going to move too much further with design on this particular project. And again, some of the text on this slide is kind of reciting what I, what I already just told you. The next one on my list is Home Place Pump Station. So this is a pump station that was damaged in Hurricane Ida. Uh, we've done a, a damage assessment and provided some recommendations to the parish for how, uh, frankly, to evaluate versus repair versus replacement of the pump station. Uh, that information, to in my understanding, has been uh, forwarded to FEMA for review. And as I appreciate it, the parish is still negotiating with FEMA as to whether the repair is justified or a full replacement is justified. I would defer to uh, administration as to how those negotiations are going. We just haven't been involved in that aspect of the project. Uh, and the last one is uh, drainage in the Bayou Vista community, uh, the subdivision in Bayou Vista subdivision in central uh, Lafourche. Um, this is a project that the parish applied for some money through the Louisiana, uh, the, the Watershed Initiative, LWI. Uh, and much like Dizalmas, we developed a preliminary design for this project. It included some drainage work uh, along the outside of the subdivision and a pump station at the rear of the subdivision. Um, we, we, because of the, um, I guess the best way to say it is, the, the lots in the subdivision, uh, the improvements that the landowners have in the subdivision extend to the back of all their lots. And so uh, the initial thought was to try and make the drainage improvements outside of the subdivision on the neighboring properties, which are undeveloped tracks. Uh, we developed a preliminary plan for that. We met with uh, one of the landowners in the area. Uh, because of the impact to this landowner's property, uh, he was not supportive of the plan we developed. And much like the Zalmans, we are now back to working with the Department of Public Works to come up with an alternative that perhaps doesn't impact that landowner uh, to the same degree that the initial plan does. Uh, just because, again, if you can't get property rights from the landowner, then you've got to come up with another plan. Okay, uh, so we're not going to move too much further with the design of that project until we can figure out a footprint that doesn't impact this landowner as much or perhaps not even at all. 
And I believe, Mr. Chairman, that's the last one on my list. And I'll be available to answer any questions that the council may have. Anyone have any questions for Stevie? Mr. Melvin. Hey, Steve, thanks for the report. Oh, oh, so, I'm sorry. You got it? Yeah. What do um, what you think of the best timeline on this and coming up with uh, maybe alternative plan to suitable for the landowner uh, on that side? So, on uh, the north side. The Public Works Director has asked me to come up with some alternatives and report them to them before the end of this month, which is next week. So that's our plan is to come up with some alternatives and report it to the administration before the end of this month and figure out which one we think is viable. Um, and But, I, but I'm not... But, I'm not going to go approach the landowner until we've consulted with administration to make sure it's something that we think we want to do. So the short, the direct answer is before the end of next week, I'm going to have some alternatives that I will present to uh, Mr. Barone. Okay. Uh, and then we'll go back to the landowners and see if these are acceptable. Okay, great. Can you please keep me in the loop? Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate yes, it. sir. All right. Thank you, Stevie. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Joe PCL at PCL and Associates, 115 PCL the Parkway and Cutoff. Um, our first project we have to report on is um, the Galliano Airport Connector Road and Bridge. This is a project that you have concurrently going on with uh, the Great Lafourche Port Commission, LADOTD, and FHWA. Sea uh, Level Construction is the contractor. Um, they're working on, uh, right now, working on basically the bridge and the bridge machinery components. Uh, they're complete with most of the asphalt except for the tie-ins <coughs> at LA1 and 308 and 3235. Um, as you see last week, they installed all the form work for the counterweights. Uh, they, they've completed fabrication of the bridge span deck in Thibodeau and they're gonna, current, they're gonna move it down in pieces, assemble it on site and put it in place within the upcoming months. Uh, their current schedule completion is January of 2025. So their schedule completion date is slipping some, um, but it's in reach. Um, Hurricane Ida storm damage repairs to pump stations. Uh, the Rita pump station project includes two <coughs> new 30 inch pumps, a diesel engine, sump and trash screens. So we've completed all the site sur surveying, soil borings, preliminary drawings, and as of last week, we have all the permits for the project. Uh, so we're beginning to finalize the project plans. Uh, they're at a 90% completion um, milestone. We, so we sent them over uh, to Dylan to have him take a look at them. Once we get a, his comments on them, we'll finalize those plans and hopefully go out to bids sometime later this year. Uh, and the Road Sales Tax District 2 uh, priority road list. Um, this project was asphalt patching, overlay, street um, reconstruction. Um, we did a bunch of streets all the way from La Rose to Golda Meta, including the Golda Meta boat launch ramp. Uh, Byron Talbot was the contractor, so the project is complete. And in the lean period, that project went really relatively well and pretty quick. Uh, the Sugar Ridge pump station, this project also includes two new 30-inch pumps with diesel engines, sump and trash greens. Uh, we've completed all the surveying, soil borings, um, and are 95% complete with the project drawings. Um, Dylan's reviewing them now. As soon as he's finished reviewing them, we'll be going out for bids on this project. Um, I got that backwards. So the Rose Boat Launch, um, we've uh, completed... Um, we're in a permitting process right now. We have a state permit. Uh, we have all our local port permits and we're going through engineering review with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, we have done geotechnical soil borings and surveying. Um, the Corps is asking for additional uh, geotechnical work, uh, which we're working on now. Um, on the road sales tax district, um, priority road improvements. So this is the parish-wide um, road, new road sales tax district. Uh, which includes asphalt patching, overlay street construction, incidental, incidental drainage. Uh, we've been given the, the 50 worst streets that, are, um, that were assessed previously uh, in that software system. Um, I work and uh, we're doing a, 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 an assessment ourselves of it to determine a budget 
and for a project that we hope to be started early in 2025. Um, and Cote Blanche Bridge rehabilitation. Uh, so the Cote Blanche Bridge is, um, it needs a new deck. Um, dry docking of the pontoon. The pontoon was put in in uh, 2015 and uh, it needs to go to dry dock. It's in fairly decent condition. We've done some surveying on it to determine, you know, which components of it need attention. Uh, of course, we're going to be looking into alternatives for the bridge deck. Uh, that old wood bridge, that deck is not working out. So we'll probably go with some kind of grading or something. Uh, so we're working on determining a detailed scope and then we'll give a budget to the DPW and then we'll move forward with the design work from there. And last is the Choctaw Levee Mitigation Project. So we've got all the permits for the, the mitigation project and for the Choctaw Levee. And part of the permitting process deals with relocating the levee that's south of the, um, the pipeline right away along Choctaw Road and in um, also restoring some of the cypress swamp that was damaged when in the construction of the levee. So uh, we have to develop construction plans to do that and go out for bid. So we're currently performing field surveying now. Uh, the idea is to, to go to bid sometime late this year and then have a project going sometime in early 2025. Any questions? Would you be so kind as to go back to the LaRose boat launch? Yes, pick, sir. Pick just for a sec. Sure. Oh, right there. Yeah, that was it. Got it. Okay. Appreciate it. If you, if you <laughs> I want just to wanted to have an idea, well, I, and I, I know I've seen it before, but... I can email that to you if that'd you be like. Great. That'd be great. I'll do that. Good deal. Much appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Hold on, Daniel. You. Just press his light, and you have the floor. Daniel? Yeah, Joe, you... You familiar with them three, four streets in the town of Golden Meadow? Because mm. I go to just about all their meetings and they bring it up every meeting that they're going to be put on a list two thirds of the end of the year or whatever. And I've never seen nothing yet. You got to remember, they're the only municipality that's in the road sales tax district. They're in the previous one and then this one. And they got three or four streets that they should be getting fixed, but it's I never hear nothing about it. I can't remember all the streets that are on this 50 street list, but I mean, if you send those three through DPW, we'll certainly take a look at them and see where they at on the priority. Well, it's they've been turning it in. We we have them, Joe. Okay. Yeah. We'll take a look at it. And uh, you said the bridge is going to be ready in January. January of 2025. Yeah, it said December, and now it's January. It was September before December. But you got to look at this. The Golden Meadow Bridge has been out for almost two years. November is two years. This bridge started with nothing, and in two years, you almost have a new bridge. Can you believe that? They are making good progress, you know, with the construction of the project, but What's hurting them is um, the machinery. I've kind of talked about that before. The, con the, the fabrication of the machinery is going to hold up the schedule. That's what's holding their schedule up now. But that's coming to an end. The machinery is getting close to being delivered. So hopefully later this summer they'll install the machinery and then I'll, they'll be able to start putting, really putting it together. But looking at the airport bridge is... Um Big pieces that they have left to put. They've done a lot of cement work that's already done. Yep. So once it's not start putting that like a puzzle, there's your bridge. Just hope the puzzle goes together well. You know. Okay. <laughs> All right, man. Thank y'all. Uh, Dylan, got some follow-up? Yes, sir. I just want to follow up and let Mr. Lorraine know that the three streets from the town of Golden Meadow are submitted and are within that 50 that Piss Hill and Associates is vetting. That's on the list he said, Dan. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, hold on. There, because I, I'll make their meetings, and the way they do it, when they have something on the agenda, they don't take it off till it's completed. And it's been on there a long time. 
All right, good deal. Thank you, Joe. Much Thank appreciate you. it. Do we have any other architect in or engineers? Okay, it brings us to item H, public wishing to address the council, public hearings, agenda items, etc. Ms. Corleen. Mr. Jimmy Battle, if you come to the podium, Mr. Battle, please state your name and address for the record, and please remember you have three minutes. Jimmy Bado from uh, 135 Rudy Julian and cut off on the Highway 3235. The reason I'm here, um, I'm the, the guy that built the Highlands of Cutoff Subdivision about 20 something years ago. And uh, they've been having drainage problems. And the parish got involved a couple of, I guess, years ago. And uh, a year or so ago, they told me they were going to put culverts in there in a the large drainage ditch. And I told them, culverts don't, do not belong in the drainage ditch. Well, they went ahead and did it this year, and the last two weeks with all this rain we've been having, they're starting to flood. Now, if y'all know it as a state law, you cannot put anything in a drainage dish that will slow down the water. This has slowed down the water. Basically, up front on, off of Highway uh, 1, the, these people drain all the way back to a mop subdivision. Well, this guy's telling me, Mr. Jim Montez, he's a battalion fire chief. He's the last house on 52nd Street. He says the water used to get in his ditch and take off to the back. Now it's got to get a foot high before it takes off to the back and very slowly. These culverts are making a plug. That's the little drawings I gave y'all all. It's basically the culverts don't need highway 3235 or 248 by 48 culverts. They're side by side so it gives you an eight foot opening by a four foot height. We've never had problem with this drainage except the grass started growing, the trees started, people were not maintaining the canal. Now these covers in here, we got a plug. It's holding back water. Like I'm saying, the, let's uh, think Sunday we had six inches of rain. They had two or three homes that started to raise up their furniture. That's how close it was to getting in the house. We get a hurricane, and it's hurricane season, and one of them storms that rain for two days, you'll have 30 some homes making lawsuits against y'all. Y'all are liable. Basically, y'all putting culverts in there, it puts y'all in the liability of it. Am I right? If it's against the law to put culverts in a, in a ditch, that holds up the drainage. And that's what happened. It's slowing down the drainage, so y'all are liable. So it might have 20-something to 30-something people calling y'all and putting a lawsuit against y'all. Y'all need to remove them culverts. The, the parish is working on cleaning the ditch up. They start to spray it today. They try to spray it with the rain. They're going to get a, a little excavator with a bush hog on it. They're going to try to trim it, clean it up, and they need to sweep it out. we got a plan. We've been talking to the parish president, but the covers need to come out. Y'all got, got a lawsuit on your, on, your, on your hands. It's coming if y'all don't take them covers up. That's basically it. I don't know what else to tell y'all. I mean, look, I worked for the Levy District 16 years, and I was a plumber for 30 years. I know how about water drainage and all stuff like that. You cannot put covers in a big drainage canal. The drainage canal is 11 foot wide. Five foot deep and probably six foot bottom. You can, and they put two 36 inch covers in there. Two 48 inch covers wouldn't have been big enough. I well told them before they put them in, do not put them in. But I mean, I can't stop the parish. They did it, you know. But I know what happened. It was a, a, a political thing. The, the owner of the property that forced y'all to put it in. Her brother is a, 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 a high, high class guy in Baton Rouge. He's, you know, he's a senator or something. So he forced y'all into doing that thing. It was political that caused it. Y'all need to correct it, because I, I, I hate to see y'all getting sued, you know. Y'all trying to do good work over here, and this is not part of it, you know. It's, it's, it's a problem. Uh, I wish you'd have listened to me, but I, hey, I'm just a corner ass that don't know anything. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jimmy. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Mr. Charles Plaisance, if you'd come to the podium, sir, state your name and address for the record. Please remember you have three minutes. Charles Plaisance, 206 West 53rd Street, Cutoff, Louisiana. I'm one of the residents that Jim is referring to. I live directly east behind Providence, which is a highland subdivision. <coughs> the water flow has drastically reduced since the cause was put into place. I, Mr. President, Chasson came down and saw the situation himself. I am surrounded by ditches, all four sides of me. Guess who's getting the water? I am. I told Dylan he's not here today, or he is. Mm -hmm. Dylan, remember when I told you? It, it, sir, excuse me. So right now you're addressing the council. You can speak into the mic, and then we'll, we'll be able to hear you. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. I just, didn't just see the record. Yeah, the recorder yeah. doesn't pick you up when you when okay. you move away. We, we're not picking you up on the recording. 
Well, me and Dylan spoke about there's another drainage ditch on the south side of 53rd Street. It's a state ditch. It was dug for agricultural use. Me and Dylan spoke about it, that we could dig that ditch. We have the right away from the two property owners, that we can dig that ditch and it'll flow into Bay Lafourche. I know the Levy District doesn't want any more water in Bay Lafourche, <coughs> but if I cannot, and I'm going to state it again, if I cannot have that ditch dug and put into Bay Lafourche, we're going to have problems. I flooded three times, three times since this culvert's been installed. How you think I feel? Not my house, my garage. Next is my outdoor kitchen. Next is my tool shop. Next is my recreational room. There's nothing I can do except that one ditch. And that one ditch, we're draining five acres by right at 5,000 feet in one ditch. In one ditch, that is full of restrictions. I do not have a beach in my neighborhood, but it's surprising how many beach balls I pull out that ditch. I spend half my day after a significant rainstorm passing the ditch with my four wheeler, picking trash out the ditch so we can maintain some sort of flow. Dylan, they came, they dug a ditch across on a servitude to service a guy, his new home, his culvert. He called, they wanted a 15 inch culvert place. That's fine and dandy. You know where the top of the culvert's at? It's above the ground. Smaller so what does that do when it comes and Smaller cuts across my property? Some time. Mr. Perko relinquish some time. It just, it just floods me out. I'm on a, you know, I've had rain three times, the last three rains, from four and a half to five inches of rain to an inch and a half of rain. And I had the same amount of water. The same <coughs> width of the river, because it's no longer a canal back of my house, it's a river. And there's one other thing I don't want to address. Mm -hmm. I'd like Dylan or Mr. President to address someone to get with energy. There is property on the north side of me. They, and they're well aware of this, Dylan and Archie. They will not let us walk on their property, much less do any grass cutting, any spraying, any digging, anything. We're not allowed on that property. But right up against our property, which the servitude was given, by our family, they built a road. They built a road three feet away from a ditch. That's all fine and dandy. All it took was four energy trucks. Four energy trucks. And they pushed the dirt into the ditch. The energy engineer comes, young lady, She's sticking stakes. I said, ma'am, what are you doing? She said, well, I'm marking where the poles are going to go. I said, you marking where the poles are going to go? She said, yes, sir. I said, you putting the poles in the ditch. You're 12 inches away from the side of a ditch that's already collapsed. Well, that's what they tell me to do. The next day, here comes the four trucks. They tore up the road. They pushed the ditch, the, the embankment basically into the ditch. They drove the poles. I went to the guy, I said, me and Mr. J. Montes. We went up to the fella and we asked him. He said, well, we gotta do what the engineers tell us to do. Well, they went down, what, seven feet? Seven feet, seven feet deeper than what they were supposed to. Well, all that mud on the auger, when you pull the auger out the ground, there's five poles. Guess where the, the mud's at? It's in the ditch. Now, you know who's gonna dig it out? When it dries up, if it ever dries up? 
I'm going to be the one that's going to have to go and dig it out. I mean, it, it, something needs to be done. And we need to do this project, like me and Dylan talked. I mean, for now, the people are just waiting on the paperwork to get the right of -ways. For right now, if they could at least come and bush hog or spray that down the by ditch, it so would, would give us... Mr. Okay, so Mr. Melvin's going to relinquish a little bit more time. Mr. Plazos, if you can get to your summary, I guess. Well, what I'm telling you is I'm surrounded by water. And I have no way to go. Anywhere. You know, I watch water, like I say, from four and a half inches to five inches of rain Sunday to an inch and a half, an inch to an inch and a half this morning. And I had the same amount of water. I am draining four acres by right at 5,000 feet. It's not going to happen in one ditch, especially the condition of the ditch that Providence has. And I just like people to hear me and try to get something done. Because it's like Mr. Bado said, when you're going to have problems, y'all are responsible. Y'all are responsible. There was restriction placed in that ditch. Now, I'm not threatening nobody. I, I just want to see something get done. <laughs> just get it cleaned up, straightened up, where we can maintain it. You understand? I mean, that, that's all I'm yeah. asking. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like, and, and much appreciated. I don't want to engage you too much because of the threats of lawsuits. And so, my, well, our it, district it, attorney, it, it, I want you to understand, our district attorney, uh, back in 2015, made it crystal clear to me when somebody references or talks about the potential of a, of a, a lawsuit, don't say anything more. So, I, as while I want to engage you, I'm not going to say much because of that threat. I just, well, I can't. But I, I'm but not I am the, happy I'm to. I'm not the person that I'm speaking on behalf understood. of a subdivision that has, what, 50 houses? Yeah, I'm not personally saying that I'm going to do anything because I won't. Understood. I'll deal with it. I've been dealing with it. I've been in that neighborhood for 63 years. I know the water flow. I know what happens. I'm not going to hold anybody liable. I'm going to manage. I'll put a pump in if I have to. No, I know. And Mr. Jim's the same way. We're, we're good friends. You know, we're just trying <laughs> to, to, to get something done. That's all. Dylan, uh, do you have any comments? It sounds like y'all have been engaged on this. Um, you have the floor if you're willing to Yes, to thank talk. you, sir. So I sent you all an email. Um, I sent the engineering plans. When all of this started, there was a... Um, the, the ditch was in very bad shape. There was a lot of landowners that had built over a, uh, a lot of residential owners that had built over a servitude. The servitude was not able to be uh, maintained via tractor or swept with an excavator. We went in there, removed those obstructions back in 2021. After the obstructions were removed, we got with the same engineer that developed the subdivision for Mr. Battle to do a study and make sure that if we were to install culverts, we would not obstruct flow. Um, that was done. I've sent you those engineering plans also with the email thread request. And so all council members have it. I just sent it to you just now. Uh, please review it, look through it. Happy to entertain any questions. Um, the culverts were installed back in 2022, about, I'm going to say summer. I'm guessing I can't find the exact date now, but we can look into it. Um, I will say that the ditch as it stands, even though today, you know, we haven't been able to cut the grass because it's so wet in there. Um, the ditch as it stands today is still in much better shape than it was in 2020. So I, I just find it hard to believe that the obstruction of those two 36 inch culverts is worse than the actual ditch cross section that was there when we found in 2020. But I'm happy to entertain any questions once y'all look over the information that I sent you. Thank you. Does any council members have any questions? None. Thank you, uh, Mr. Plazos. We're, we're ask, going to keep engaged in the can DPW. Can I ask still in a question? You, you can address it to the chair, and it'll be up okay, to him if he wants yeah. to answer it. But yeah, well, feel free. Well, I'd like to ask Dylan if he's saying the covers don't do any restriction. You got two foot of water, 18 to two foot of water, 18 inches to two foot of water on the east side of the culverts. You go on the west side. You got about three foot of open space. The culverts are not restricting it. 
Yeah, I follow. You're just saying it's a huge differential and, on either and side of the culverts. If, if we can look at that, I, I, maybe if there's a restriction there, if we can maybe look at that. You know, there's vortexes. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it causes a vortex. We put a ball. And the longer it is, that's, that's correct. You're the correct. The ball goes in one culvert and it comes out the other culvert. <laughs> it's just making a circle. I, I and along 32, 35, this is no bull. I did this Sunday in all the driving rain. And on 32, 35, you got two covers that run alongside the highway. You got Providence's ditch. And it causes a vortex from these two 18 inch culverts. And Providence doesn't drain. It's taking that nearest water along the highway. And it's bringing it there. So we just. We, you, we got a very bad situation. Is is all I got to say. Any, so, any follow-ups? I'll just I'll just Final say comments? that it, I'm not going to say it doesn't cause any restriction, but the head pressure on the upstream side can be used to force that water through. So all I'm telling you is that it was designed and properly sized. I mean, a guy with an engineering degree did. This. The same guy who missed the battle and trusted to develop his subdivision right. did it. So uh, I feel like we went to the right guy. We got the right data. And we installed it as per the plans. Um, I, a gentleman with an engineering degree much smarter than me signed off on this. So um, if it's causing a restriction, that's possible. But the buildup can cause head pressure and force that water to come through it faster. Uh, let me ask you one thing. Will we look into that ditch? That goes into the uh, under the highway. Yeah, so we've contacted the landowner for a right of way and have had no luck in him signing it. He had a lot of questions about it. We're waiting to get back with him on it. Who did you get with? The, the the gentleman he mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have nothing to do with that. <laughs> he, Jim doesn't have nothing to do with that. Yes, yeah, it sounds like it's a little bit confused. I don't know if we can maybe talk about this offline. We reached out to the gentleman that owns the land it's up his, there. His son. His son owns one side of the property. Mr. Montez? Yeah. That's who we reached and out to. And it's Glenn Raymond. And, and yes. they'll, they'll both That's who we sign. reached out to. They'll both sign. That's not what we're getting from them, but we can reach out again. <laughs> That's what we heard. I okay. understand. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Mr. Plazos. And thank you, Mr. Battle. Mr. Ms. Gilda Cooks, if you come to the podium, Ms. Cooks, state your name and address for the record. Please remember you have three minutes. Good evening. My name is Gilda Cooks. I live at 124 Biloxi Court in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Um, I'm here about the uh, Meridale subdivision. Um, in June 3rd, on June 3rd, my daughter had an accident. She was able to, to walk out alive. Um, I have pictures of it. It, it was pretty bad. Um, like I said, um, we also had a councilman that I grew up with. He lost his life at the same subdivision. Um, we have problems with people being cut out there, out of their cars at this subdivision. Um, it's, it's a bad area. If you talk to anybody that live in the area of Thibodeau, it's a, a lot of people just refuse to even go in that part of town. Okay, I still have family that live in a subdivision that right in the back of that um, intersection. So. Doing something about this intersection means a lot to me, okay? Um, the present state of the intersection, like I said, if this is the stop sign, you have cane field three feet further. So there's no visibility. Then when the people inch up past the cane field, you got these big old intersection signs that, that, that let them know it's an and all you see, if the sun is shining, is this big light. And it, they, they're about yay tall. My daughter was in an equinox. The sign was bigger than equinox. That's how she almost got thrown out the car. OK? Because um, I asked the gentleman, Mr. Richard Abadie out of Baton Rouge, what happened? Why would you come in front of this? You know, why, why would you do that to my child? He didn't see it. He couldn't see. So it's got to be the city fault. Something has to be done. Okay? I'm, I mean, I'm here because I don't want something so bad to happen again. Tyrone's family is supposed to have been here today. I was running late. I didn't pick his sister up. So that y'all can understand, people are hurting. Okay? This, something needs to be done about this. You can't see the traffic. Um, you know, I mean, Somebody got to have a heart and do something. 
roundabout, red light, something got to be done because something bad is going to happen again. So that's why I'm here, because this is ridiculous. The last time I was here, they said they was doing an a investigation into the area and whatnot. I reached out to some people you know, in Baton Rouge, and I called the Department of Transportation and different things, and I'm going to report back to them what I hear today. Thank you. Do we have? I mean, do we have any updates on that traffic study that was supposed to get done? No, and, and, and I know the last time you were here, I, I wasn't here, but we, we've met with the engineering group to, to work through it. We've asked South Central for an update to see if they had any update on theirs, and, and the MPO really hadn't moved on it either. Um, I, I, I will say, in, in, in talking with law enforcement, you know, we took over that road several years ago through the road transfer program, right? Part of Talbot's the city's, part of it's ours. Um, a vast majority of the crashes are people running the stop sign coming f from Ridgefield. It, it's not so much an issue with, with people on Talbot. Speed may be somewhat of an issue, right? But it's people running the stop signs off of Merrydale or, in your point, they can't see and they're pulling out in the traffic and it's causing an issue. Um, so I, I don't know what the solution is going to be. Um, you know, We had a debate with, with Councilman Broomfield about the four-way stop. Again, I'm not sure that that's an answer either because you put a four-way stop on that busy street I think you're going to wind up with more accidents, right? So we'll, we'll reach out to um, the principal tomorrow and, and get an update from them when they think they might be done. I know they sent some people out to the intersection to start to look at it, but we haven't gotten their report back yet. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Brumfield, you have the floor, sir. Ms. Cooks, thank you for coming. Uh, I, did, I, have to, I had the opportunity to talk to South Central Planning. And what she said was that... Uh, sure. Dejay, can you pull your mic a little oh, closer? I'm sorry. There you go. She couldn't. I did have testing. the opportunity to talk to South Central Planning. And what she told me was that they uh, submitted a pre-application and that it would be uh, evaluated by DOT, the project election team, uh, somewhere around September. So uh, which additional findings, she said that they had some additional findings that uh, more than just that intersection was causing problems. So, uh, but she said she did work with uh, our Department of Public Works, uh, one of the guys, Aaron, I think it was, that she mentioned. And uh, until then, I can keep you updated with that. Okay. Okay. Well, thank, thank you for coming, Ms. Cooks. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, DJ. Tom and Wanda Drews, is that correct? Yes. Good. State your name and address for the record, please. Please remember, you have three minutes. Wanda and Tom Drews, 224 Pertweet Lane in Raceland. I talked to Mr. Charles Rodriguez this morning, just found out about the meeting after I talked to him. Calling about the drainage on Pertweet, number one, we have culverts that are blocked and not to grade. They're too small, they're collapsing. Um, we have blockages in the culverts. We also have a tree, some trees blocking. When you get off um, per tweet, 182 runs this way, and per tweet is like this. You cannot see to get onto 182. The trees are just way overgrown. Um, the pump back there, uh, Charles said that it's an automatic pump. We didn't think it was, but if you say it is, it is. Um, it's, it doesn't come on all the time, and the water just never drains. The property line on our house, on our property, and my neighbor's has been wet for months. It's got like two feet of water almost in some spots. It just will not drain. Um, I don't know how I got elected to do this, sorry. <laughs> So, so, so part of the problem is the high point of the, of the neighborhood is no longer the high point. So where it drains down to 182, it goes out to the pumping canal, that is supposed to be the low point. If you ever look at it, it's almost completely dry there. And when you come to our property, which is around the high point, you have about two foot of water. We have a 24 inch culvert that we put in with the catch basins. And if you always look down at the catch basins, it's always wet. So when you go down towards the low point where it's supposed to drain to 182, it'll only have about three inches of water. There was also some rumors about the level of the pumping canal was raised to, to help the cattlemen. So they didn't have the cows and have to go into the body and drown. So it's, it's like um, the last two years, 
that property has been getting so wet that, that we, it's, it's hard to cut grass. So we sent some pictures to Mr. Aubrey today to show neighbor cut their yard today and it's nothing but mud trails and, and it's just. Yeah, there does actually stand in water in a lot of the properties. Also, beginning of per tree from 182 to around the curve where we at is one drainage. It goes down toward 182. The back part of per tree drains to the back by Mitchell, which is the back road that runs on the pastures. So there's a, there's a difference in some people, the water drains to the back and it goes, I guess, to the pumping station on 652. I'm not really mm -hmm. sure. It goes to the same one. It goes to the same one. But then where we're at, it's, it's like it's holding the water right there because part of it goes this way and part of it goes that way and we're right there. So the other thing before I lose my time, we were wondering about getting a no-wake zone on Bayou Dumar, because we're, we're, we're on a levee, we're on a protection levee, so when boats are passing real fast, it's eroding the levee real bad. So we were hoping that we could maybe get a no wake zones put up there so that people just go a little slower. That could be yeah, another it, it problem. It is a dead end. Well, it goes to a bridge and you can't get underneath the bridge. Yeah, it goes the to the pump. But they, yeah. they do go kind of fast in there. They go down and get to a dead end and then they come back the same way. But, so it is eroding the, the levee. Yeah, or can we put up a no wake zone signs? I mean, is that something we can do ourselves? On your own personal property? Yeah, it's yeah. our own personal I property. I don't see any problem with it. I, I will mention that in the uh, Lafouche Parish Game and Fish Commission, I know they, they generally have uh, jurisdiction over Dumore also. Um, and after Hurricane Ida, they lost almost all their signs. So I know they, they had ordered some, and they're supposed to be going out and put them all over. So that could be another, but on your own personal property, I don't see why you yeah, can't put no wake zone. Any. So our property goes into the middle of the body. <coughs> so I mean. Yeah, I mean, I'd put signs. If you want to put signs, put signs up. But if not, you can engage the LaFouche Game and Fish Commission because they can probably do the same thing. Okay. The uh, last thing I wanted to say real quick was um, Rhett Rubinsky came by the house and bought uh, some copies, and I forgot them. I'm sorry. I was rushing because we were late. Um, of the, the right of way from 1958 that he gave, that everybody, Mr. Pertwee, all the Pertwees and all, when they did the subdivision, I guess, for them to maintain the, the ditches and the, the road and all of that. And I can get them sent to you, I'll, you know, I'll scan them in and send them to your email if you want. You know, but he had a copy for everybody. I'm sorry, I forgot it. Yes, yeah, so I don't know if someone from, I mean, Charles, if you can maybe direct them, because from restricted culverts, trees, pumps, drainage between the houses, there's a lot of information, so I don't think we can get that address here, but uh, yeah, it probably sounds like someone from DPW should probably just go visit right. with them. They also have on 653 an excavator showed up, to, I guess, yesterday, but was digging this morning. But they just so, stay on 653. You had said they were going to Pertweet, but they never made it to Pertweet. Yeah, there, there, there is an issue so. with state versus parish. So. If, you, if you don't mind, hold on one second. I didn't realize Dylan had his light on before you. Go ahead, Dylan. So that excavator did show up just, to clean out uh, along 653 for the water that leaves per tweet and goes. Um, Mr. Charles did contact me about this, I'm going to say two, three weeks ago, maybe even a little bit longer. Um, the supervisor and the operations manager in that area went out and looked at it. They did determine that 653 needed to be cleaned to get that water to the pump quicker. Um, I'm unaware of all the other stuff, but I'd like to send them the visit with you so they can talk about the high spot, the low spot, the other stuff you have. And then I did notate the... Um, intersection that you're unable to see when you're pulling out. And when you're referencing 182, are you talking about 653? 653, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure. Sorry. I got it in my notes, so we good. Um, the only reason we didn't start with the excavator yesterday is we have some issues with the trucks, and we need to put it in a truck to haul out. We had two dump trucks go down. As soon as those dump trucks are fixed, we are going to start that project. Because the excavator was in the area, we took advantage to clean the drainage canal going underneath the bridge Good. because we have a lot of debris that comes underneath that bridge. As you know, it gets stuck there. So um, instead of doing nothing with the excavator, we decided to change our, our pace a little bit. Um, as soon as those dump trucks are fixed, everything's been one called, ready to go. We are going to start sweeping along 653 all the way to the pump canal. Okay. okay, also, the, the ditches, the, the big culverts that are on 653, I don't know, north, south, you know, I don't know. Uh, north, north is highway 9. Yeah, the, the culverts are blocked. I don't know how y'all going to get that. The big, big culverts that are in the big ditches are blocked. We'll take care so, of it. So, all righty. Okay. See? Mr. Charles, you had anything? This is good, good enough, all right. Thank you, Dylan. You Thank you for answering those questions. Okay. Thank thanks. you all. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, Ms. Corleen.
With that said, brings us to item I, public hearing and ordinances for ratification. I now entertain a motion to open public hearing. So moved by Mr. Perk, second by Mr. Roderick. All in favor, soon if I say an aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passed with eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. Item six, ordinance approving NOLA Title Group LLC and SRI Services Incorporated to publicly advertise and auction the educated property located at 20644 Highway 1, Golden Meadow, Louisiana, 70357. Assessment number 01021558. With a minimum starting bid of $11,962.14, authorizing the parish president to sign SQ and minister any other documents. Moved by Mr. Lorraine for the administration, second by Mr. Araby. Would anyone from the public like to comment on ordinance number six? Second call, public input, ordinance number six. Last and final call, anyone from the public like to comment on ordinance number six? Anyone from the council? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passed with eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. Item seven, ordinance approving amendment number one to the lease agreement with J-Bond Properties LLC to serve clients affected by the opioid epidemic and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said amendment in any relevant documents. Mr. Perk, on behalf of the administration, second by Mr. Rodrig. Would anyone from the public like to come in on the ordinance at number seven? Second call, public input, the ordinance at number seven. Last and final call, anyone from the public like to come in on the ordinance at number seven? Anyone from the council? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passed, eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence is being Councilman Adams. Item eight, ordinance amending and reenacting chapter 26 of Lafouche Parish Code of Ordinances as it pertains to offenses and miscellaneous provisions and authorizing the parish president to sign SQ and minister any other documents. Mr. Perk, will move on behalf of the administration. Second by Mr. Roderick. Would anyone from the public like to comment on the ordinance at number eight? <laughs> Second call, public input, the ordinance at number eight. Last and final call, anyone wants to comment on this ordinance from the public? Anyone from the council? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. I now intend a motion to close public hearing. So moved by Mr. Perk, second by Ms. Chesson. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passed eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. Brings us to item J, proposed ordinances. Mr. Melvin, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, sir. Number nine, proposed ordinance to amend ordinance 5084, amending and reenacting chapter two, administration article three, provisions governing the operations of parish governing body, section 2-103, procedures to be followed by persons wishing to address Lafouche Parish Council during all regular and special meetings of the Lafouche Parish Code of Ordinances as it pertains to deleting A of section two, Dash 103 and adding section 2 103 the following language any supporting documentation presented and submitted for the record must be in the form of a hard copy as opposed to computer based electronic form and amending and reenacting section 2 103 of chapter 2 thus reflecting the new code of ordinances moved by Mr. Otan number 10 proposed ordinance establishing 20 miles per hour speed limit on Chauvin Drive Race in Louisiana, Ward 3, District 6, Parish of Lafourche State, Louisiana, providing for the placement of speed limit signs and providing penalties for the violation thereof, moved by Mr. Araby. 11. Proposed ordinance amending ordinance 6852 that adopted the 2024 operations and maintenance capital budget for the Lafourche Parish Council, as well as setting salaries for unclassified employees and providing for by Article 5 of the Lafourche Parish Home Rule Charter, moved by Ms. Chasson for the administration. Number 12, proposed ordinance providing for a 2024 supplemental appropriation, appropriation 24 008 within the 2024 operations and maintenance budget capital outlay budget to correct the budget for civil defense grants, deobligate recreation projects, and increase the budget for Lockport Community Center Ballpark. And authorize the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said transactions as provided. Uh, for by Article 6 of the Lafourche Parish Home Rule Charter, moved by Mr. Adams for the administration. Somebody want to move him, Mr. Adams, please? Thank you. Moved by Mr. Perk. Number 13, proposed ordinance approved by holding of an election in Fire Protection District Number 7, Lafourche Parish, State of Louisiana, Saturday, December 7th, 2024. Authorize the renewal of a special tax therein. Would someone please move for me? Thank you, Mr. Araby. And that is it, sir. 
All right, thank you, Mr. Melvin. That brings us to item K, resolutions. Number 14, resolution approving amendment number three to the agreement with Duplantis Design Group PC for the project titled New Street Light DOTD Permit Acquisition and authorizing the parish president to sign SQ and minister said amendment and any other relevant documents. Moved by Mr. Perk for the administration, seconded by Mr. Roderick. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passed with eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. Item 15, resolution appointing one member to the Recreation District Number One Board. Mr. Araby for the administration. Who do you have, Mr. Araby? We have uh, one vacancy, one appointment, Mr. Garrett English. Second. Second by Mr. Roderick for Mr. English. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passed, eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. Item 16, resolution approving amendment number one to the agreement between the Louisiana Housing Corporation and Lafourche Parish Government Office of Community Action for the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, La Heap, fiscal year 2024, and authorizing the parish president to sign SQD and Minister, said amendment, and any other relevant documents. Moved by Mr. Brumford, administration. Second by Mr. Perk. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed eight yeas, zero nays, one absence, that absence being Councilman Adams. Item 17, resolution approving a memorandum of understanding between the parish of Lafourche and the city of Monroe for the use of emergency shelters in the event of a mandatory evacuation of Lafourche Parish and authorizing the parish president to sign SQ and Minister said agreement and the all relevant documents. Mr. Perk on behalf of the administration, second by Mr. Araby. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passed eight yeas, zero nays, one absence, that absence being Councilman Adams. Item 18, resolution approving a memorandum of understanding between the Parish of Lafourche and Wichita Parish Police Jury to assist in facilitating emergency sheltering and authorizing the Parish President to sign SQ and Minister said agreement and any other relevant documents. Moved by Mr. Perk for administration, seconded by Mr. Araby. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passed, eight yeas, zero nays, one absence, that absence being Councilman Adams. Item 19, resolution approving a memorandum of understanding between the Parish of Lafourche and Wichita Parish Sheriff's Office to assist in facilitating emergency sheltering and authorizing the Parish President to sign, execute, and minister said agreement and any other relevant documents. So did I just read the exact same thing? No. No, one was a police jury, one was a Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Moved by Mr. Perk for the administration. Uh, second by Mr. Araby. Any discussion? Motion, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Perk, uh, second by Mr. Araby. Yeah. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passed eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence is being Councilman Adams. Number 20 is being pulled. Number 20 has been pulled. Item 21, resolution approving an, an agreement with Premier Support Services LLC to provide catering services and optional dining facilities in the event of an emergency and authorizing the parish president to sign SQ and Minister. Set agreement and any all relevant documents. Move by Mr. Perk on behalf of the administration. Second by Mr. Araby. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passed eight yeas, zero nays, one absence, that absence being Councilman Adams. Item 22, resolution approving amendment and supplement to the agreement between Louisiana Department of the Treasury, State of Louisiana, and Lafourche Parish Government for the Hurricane Ida Recovery Fund as per Act 403 and authorizing the Parish President to sign SQ and Minister said amendment and any and all relevant documents. Moved by Mr. Perk on behalf of the administration, second by Mr. Araby. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes eight yeas, zero nays, one absence, that absence being Councilman Adams. Item 23, resolution approving a memorandum of agreement between the Louisiana Department of Health, Office of Public Health, Bureau of Community Preparedness, and Lafourche Parish Government for a closed point of dispensing site during an emergency and authorizing the parish president to sign SQ and Minister, said agreement, and any all relevant documents. Moved by Mr. Perkin, behalf of administration, second by Mr. Araby. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passed eight yeas, zero nays, one absence, that absence being Councilman Adams. Item 24, resolution approving an agreement between the Louisiana Department of Economic Development and Lafourche Parish Government for the Louisiana Development Ready Community LDRC grant award to market a workforce development initiative for the parish and authorize the parish president to sign SQ and Minister said agreement and any other relevant documents. Mr. Roger will move on behalf of the administration, second by Mr. Perk. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Is anyone opposed? 
Motion passes eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. Item 25, resolution accepting the low bid of Norris and Boudreaux Contractors LLC in the amount of $4,184,600.10 for the project titled Alley Door Drainage Improvements Phase 2 and authorizing the parish president to sign SQ and Minister Set Agreement and ER Revenue Documents. Mr. Arby from Bath Administration, second by Mr. Lorraine. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Does anyone oppose? Motion passes eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. Item 26, resolution approving an agreement between Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries and Lafourche Parish Government for the LaRose Public Boat Launch Renovations Project and authorizing the Parish President to sign SQ and administer said agreement and any all revenue documents. Move by Ms. Chesson by administration. Second by Mr. Lorraine. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Does anyone oppose? Motion passed eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. Item 27, resolution approving an agreement between Lafouche Parish Recreation District Number 11 and the Parish of Lafouche to provide reimbursement for Hurricane Ida repairs and replacements and authorizing the Parish President to sign SQ and Minister said agreement and any relevant documents. Mr. Roger Eric for the administration, second by Mr. Araby. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Does anyone oppose? Motion passes eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. Resolution approving change order number one for the project titled Recreation District Number One, Lockport Recreation Ballpark and Community Center Hurricane Auto Replacements and Repairs, increasing the contract price by $3,366 and authorizing the parish president to sign SQ and Minister said change order and any other documents. Mr. Araby will move on behalf of the administration. Second by Mr. Perk. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. Item 29, resolution approving amendment and supplement to the agreements between Lafouche Parish Government and various entities for the Hurricane Ida Recovery Fund as per Act 403. And authorizing the Parish President to sign SQ and Minister said amendment and any other documents. Mr. Perk on behalf of the administration, second by Mr. Roderick. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion passed eight yeas, zero nays, one absence. That absence being Councilman Adams. Brings us to item L, past president, department heads, directors, our managers, reports, presentations, and our updates. Number 30, finance representative to present the monthly finance report as required by the state agreed upon procedures for June 2024. Mr. President, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You guys all should have received the financials. If you have any questions, we're here to answer them. Thank you, Archie. Brings us to item M, questions for the administration. Mr. Melvin, you have the floor, sir. Yeah. Um, I actually have a, a question for. Well, is he going? Okay. Um, I'll just email him. But basically, uh, on Highway 2324, uh, excuse me, on Highway 1 at 2324, um, I know it's the state that usually tends to that. However, they have a little ditch that needs a little bit of cleaning on the highway, and it's going to totally alleviate them getting better drainage. And we're talking 50 feet, maybe, if that, 20 feet. No, it's on 2324, it's Highway 1, but its address is number 2324. It's a little confusing, I apologize. Okay. Yeah, so 2324 Highway 1, LA 1, okay? Um, so I'll email him about that, but I just wanted to note and ask, because the lady called me again and said, hey, they, she didn't see anybody yet, so it would just give him a lot of relief. Thank you. Mr. Brownfield. Yes, I just have a question for Dylan. Dylan, where are we with the uh, grass cutting, I mean the cutting of the ditch in so, Abbey? So Mr. Barone has stepped out. Um, Mr. President, oh, or parish administrator, want to answer that, or y'all just wanted to let him talk after the meeting? Yeah, yeah we'll, I'll, we'll I'll get with you on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't Thank you, Mr. Brumfield. No worries. Ms. Chesson, you have the floor, ma'am. Do we know if there's something going on with the pickup truck, the truck that picks up the tree debris with uh, River Birch? Do y'all know anything? Does anyone from the administration there's, have any there's, updates? There's a, I've been getting a few reports. I know people turned in that their tree piles weren't picked up. It's been three weeks. Just wondering if maybe we had some trucks down. Mm -hmm. Not that we know of. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. Mr. Lorraine, you have the floor, sir. I got a good one. <clears throat> First of all, I want to say Friday night, afternoon, I got a call from some fellow fishing on the pier. And uh, so we talked, and he told me that uh, 
somebody stole the garbage cans at the Louisville boat launch. I said, well, that has never happened before, but it could, could happen. And uh, I said, I'll check on that Monday, which I did. We just formed a committee, or a bunch of people to serve on the committee that says, keep Lafouche beautiful. I think that's being worked on. And here's this, uh, this little flyer right here called uh, Clean Biz Partner Pledge. As a Clean Biz Partner, you agree to adopt the following practices. Keep your parking lots litter free. Well, first of all, I understand we always had two, three garbage cans at that Levo boat launch. Never got them stolen. I know not everybody's going to throw the trash in the garbage can, okay? We know that. We all know that. But if you don't, if you don't have no garbage cans, where do you think they're going to throw it? So I called to see about putting two more garbage cans over there, and I was told that they're, they were picked up. They're not going back. So if we're going to keep Lafouche beautiful and we can't put two garbage cans that has never been stolen before, and I thought they were stolen, but they were not. They were picked up and they said that they're not going to be returned. Now, I think every boat launch in the parish should at least have a garbage can. Maybe some of them don't, mm -hmm. but Gola Meta has it and they take care of it. So don't crucify my area if some of the other areas don't have it. It doesn't make sense. This makes no sense at all. Just two garbage, you still got the right. And you know what's, what's pitiful? You got a sign behind there that says, keep Lafouche beautiful, and the cans are gone. Come on now. How did they say that on a debate the other night? Let's quit being, playing like children and let's get it done right. Okay? So anyway, that's my deal. Why, I don't know. <coughs> Maybe we need to change that Keep Lafouche Beautiful to something else. That's it for me. Thank you, Mr. Lorraine. Any more questions for the administration? See, none brings us to item N, discussion. Anybody got any discussion? I'll just say, yeah, in, in Lockport, we uh, we had they, we tried dumpsters and all, but the people were in bananas and just made a mess. So, um, but I, I I still would love to see the recreation districts take over the areas of the boat launches. Like, I, I think that would be phenomenal. I've, I've always asked for that to, because then they could be responsible for the cans and everything else instead of DPW who has other things to be doing, getting sidetracked. But that's just my personal preference. Uh, Mr. Araby, you have the floor, sir. I just want to make a little announcement here tonight. Uh, our Race and Lions Club uh, will be putting on a chicken dinner on August the 11th. So uh, if you'd like to have a nice meal, please come by and support the Race and Lions Club. It'll be $12 a plate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Araby. Oh. Mr. Lorraine. Just because you Hold on, Mr. Lorraine. Oh, yeah. Just because but, why is it not, that why is it not moving? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lorraine, you have Just to because you don't have no garbage cans at the Lockport boat launch doesn't mean we can't ha have none in Leeville. No, I didn't say that. Well, you no, I, said just the, I said just the opposite. He said you should have one. I said that there should be we a should? body that, that watches over it and it could include the garbage cans. No, well, I, they, I, <laughs> they told me I'm hard of hearing. I'm sorry. No, no, no. We, at, at the Lockport boat launch, you have camps back there and everybody comes right. back to the launch and they throw, and so anything we've tried, they overflow and then the whole community comes and throws all their trash. So it's gotten out of hand. But if there was a person that watched over these, um, all these different boat launches, I know it's, it's a difficult thing. I think it would work a lot better, in my personal opinion. Well, I, I could tell you this. When we first started, Miss Peggy Bagala, who does a lot of work for the parish, <laughs> We had some uh, drums there. Then we got rid of that and we put a couple of cans and it, uh, it always did work. And the garbage man just makes the round of the launch, picks them up, now, now it's gone. So just throw it on the ground as far as I care. Thank you, Mr. Lorraine. Any further discussion? 
There being none, brings us to item O, adjournment. On a motion by Mr. Arby, second by Mr. Lorraine, and with no further business, Lafouche Parish Council regular meeting of July 23rd, 2024 will be adjourned at 1814 hours. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes with eight yeas, zero nays, one absence, and absence being Councilman Adams.